So how many times a week do you need to expose yourself to cold will depend on how much fat you're trying to lose and how much you're trying to increase your metabolism. There are studies that describe positive effects on fat loss of exposing yourself to cold, either through cold shower or through ice bath or other cold water. It doesn't have to actually have ice in it, provided it's cold enough for any time, anywhere, excuse me, between one and five times per week. But it turns out that just one exposure per week can be valuable. The question then is how long to get into that cold environment and how cold should that environment be? So first let's talk about how long to get into that cold environment. The answer here might be a little bit different than you might imagine. Most of you might think, oh, well, if one minute is good, three minutes is better. And if three minutes is better then 10 minutes is best. But remember the goal is to get the shiver induced release of succinate so that succinate can trigger the brown fat. It turns out that if you want to trigger the shiver, what you want to do is to get into the cold and then get out of the cold and typically not dry off and then get back into the cold and out of the cold. That will definitely stimulate more shivering than just getting into the cold itself. So what I'm not referring to is getting into the cold environment like an ice bath and waiting until you shiver and staying there shivering. Okay. You also don't want to get hypothermic. And I want to be clear. You want to, you want to get approval from your doctor before you do any of this. When you get into cold water, there are two factors that will dictate whether or not you shiver probably three, but let's just talk about the main two. One is how cold it is. So how cold should it be? And look, if you get into water, that's very, very cold. It can actually shock your heart. It can actually give you a heart attack if it's truly, truly ice cold and you're not adapted to that. So proceed with caution, please. I'm not a physician and I'm not, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. Cold, just cold enough to be uncomfortable is a good place to start. So for some of you, that's going to be 60 degrees. For some of you, that's going to be 55 degrees. For some of you, it's going to be high thirties, right? Depends on how cold adapted you are. And people vary in terms of how well they tolerate the cold. So what you need to do is find a temperature that you can get into one to five, probably one to three times a week if you really want this to accelerate fat loss. And you wanna get in until you just start to shiver. And then you wanna get out and not dry off. Wait anywhere from one to three minutes and then get back into the cold. Now, you'll notice when you get back into the cold, it'll almost seem soothing. It might actually not induce shiver. It might take away the shiver that you, were, that you had. So here's a potential kind of sets reps protocol that you can play with. Find a temperature that induces shiver for you. That's going to vary depending on your cold tolerance and how cold adapted you are. One to three, maybe five times a week. Get in until you, or get under the shower or whatever it is until you start to shiver, genuinely shiver. Then after about a minute or so, get out, spend one to three minutes out, but don't dry off. Get back in for anywhere from one to three minutes, but try and access the shiver point again. And you might do three repetitions of that. So it's three times in and three times out total. Okay. That's a great starting place. And what you don't want to do is build up your tolerance to cold so fast that pretty soon you're able to resist the shiver because remember the shiver is the source of the succinate release that will trigger brown fat thermogenesis. So if you'd like to see this protocol spelled out, you can access it zero cost at a website, which is thecoldplunge.com. The Cold Plunge is a company, they make cold plunges and they were kind enough to gift one to the Huberman Lab podcast. But I wanna emphasize that these protocols are free of cost. The folks at the Cold Plunge are not just interested in uh, marketing their product, but one of their main interests is encouraging people to engage in cold exposure for particular endpoints and goals like fat loss, resilience, et cetera, resisting inflammation. But their main focus is providing people protocols and encouraging people to use cold exposure of various kinds, not just through their products, but through cold rivers and um, jumps in the ocean and things that cold showers, whatever is uh, most convenient and accessible for various people. And so we needed a place where we could house these protocols in a permanent way and not just for this episode, but so what they've agreed to do is to post the protocols there. They should be very easy to find on their website. This particular protocol we're referring to as the 
fat loss optimization protocol for lack of a better name. And it's really grounded in how cold can be used to induce shiver. And again, it doesn't really matter how you're accessing that cold, provided you access the shiver and you're moving from the cold environment to a slightly warmer environment. So getting out of the cold shower or getting out of the ice bath, et cetera, or out of the cold plunge and then back in because it turns out that the cooling and rewarming process of the body is where shiver kicks in. And so that's distinctly different than just trying to get into the cold and stay in the cold for as long as possible. 